First World War, the Civil War, uh, even the Korean War, the Vietnam War, all of those had defined beginnings and endings. But the war against terrorism... University of Arizona professor Brent Millward has given this lecture before. Can democratic institutions survive on a permanent war footing? Do you have any idea of what brought down... But this time is different, because most of these students have direct experience with the topic at hand. They're all military veterans, and they've made their way to this classroom as part of the Warrior Scholar Project, a program designed to ease the transition from combat to college. One day on patrol, uh, you know, one of the, one of the locals uh, uh, stepped out, and then as soon as he saw us, he took off running into a cornfield. And then uh, one of our guys fired a single shot. And then, uh, you know, we start getting closer to him, and then we hear some moaning from the, from the cornfield, so he hit him. So in that moment... So the Warrior Scholar Project is an intense and immersive academic boot camp for enlisted military veterans who have recently transitioned out of or are about to transition out of active service. They've been serving their country. They've been away from a brick-and-mortar school in many cases since high school. So you're looking at four, six, eight years of being disengaged uh, from a classroom and working with a, a teacher or a professor. And so we bring them in on campus and they are students at that campus for an entire week. Probably not bad for an 18-year-old kid. <laughs> yeah, for us old people. <laughs> During that week, the Warrior Scholar participants live in college dorms. Towards the end of my active duty career. Eat in college cafeterias and spend 16-hour days honing their reading, <laughs> writing, and study skills. They, you know, the curriculum's not easy. They, they run through a lot of really difficult readings and have a lot of difficult assignments. And they're, you know, in a week's worth of time, they're going to spend, they're going to write roughly 10 pages worth of, of uh, you know, English papers. So it's, it's difficult, and I think the point of Warrior Scholar is that they can do this week, then you can do college. These are the people who inherited those states. Building that confidence is key, says Jeremy Thompson, who found himself struggling when he experienced the transition from the military to college firsthand. I came back much later than a lot of folks. I came back to school at 37, so I you know, was kind of thrown into an unfamiliar environment that I wasn't very comfortable with, and I didn't really feel like I had a lot in common with people that I was sitting in class with. And in the beginning, I kind of had doubts of whether or not, you know, this would be something I could do. Public policy in the United States right now... Army veteran and reservist Sandra Perez faced similar difficulties. I put in about 14 and a half years of active duty. Uh, where I was deployed for the war twice. And when you get out and transition into the civilian world after having been in for so long, it is, it's scary. We have a system. I'm older, I'm 42, and these are like 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. And so you really can't have a conversation with them about a lot of things because they're not, they're either straight out rude and don't care, or they just kind of look at you like, they're trying to be polite, but then they're like, okay, I have my own things to worry about, you know? Now you're sitting in a classroom with an 18-year-old on one side and a 19-year-old on the other. You've got a, a, a family. Maybe you've got children. You just feel like you don't belong. That can be incredibly heavy on the weight, uh, a, a weight on the shoulders, you know, of a veteran. And that weight can keep veterans from completing their degrees. A recent study of nearly a million veterans who used Montgomery and post-9-11 GI Bill benefits found that slightly more than half complete their training, and on average, they take longer than their non-veteran peers to do it. Veterans are finishing college within a four-year period. That's the period of, that their GI Bill covers, that they're finishing college at a rate of 29%. The cost is you're, you're losing, you know, somebody who, you know, can be a tremendous civic asset, somebody who can open a small business, somebody who can run for, you know, uh, city council, somebody who can sit on the school board. Looking at the, at the level of the democracy of the uh, political parties. But the 489 veterans who've taken part in the Warrior Scholar Project so far are defying the odds. 96% of them are either still in school or have successfully graduated. So when he says like the 
the tutelary power, mm -hmm. you know, sort of like this father. As her Warrior Scholar Week winds down, Sandra Perez is feeling more encouraged and inspired. This semester, I'm going to be applying to uh, Cal State Fullerton. I am going to be opening up my own food safety consultant business. My goal is to start a business where I can help the Latino community. I feel like that's where my essay is headed. I mean, most veterans uh, want to get back. They want to give. The sense of service is overwhelming. And that sense of service and perspective can be an asset in the classroom and the community. How do you say Palestine is a country, or not a country, but South Sudan is a country? How, how do you get that? I've never had that question before, and that's a really great one. Uh, let's think about that together. By so how does not happen? providing an easy path to an accessible top-tier education, you know, it's hurting America. We've invested a ton of money in, in training these individuals. Now let's take that and make it better, enhance it with a top-tier education. And, and apply it toward some of the problems that our society sees.